Yasumati Nanana Braja Badanagara Gokula Hanjana Kahanayasa Hey, Yasumati Nanana Braja Badanagara Kukula Hanjana Ha 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 so Gopi Parandanam Hadhanam Hanoharam Agho bhi parandana madha manohara Kali adama ravidha Kali adama ravidha Hamara Hari Dham, Hamia Vilasa Ham. Hamara Hari Dham, Hamia Vilasa Ham. Hippin of Purun Dharan, Havinana Gadavada, Vamsi Vadahasu. Vahasam Vamsi Vadhanasu Hey, Brajajan of Fallen, Sudakula Nasanam Brajajan of Fallen, Sudakula Nasanam Nandar or Hanar Hakku Han. I'm sure you you should know by now. Uh, just listen to me, and that's all. You don't have to read anything. Nandar or Hanar Hakku Han. Hey, Govinda Madhava, Navanita Taskara. And go in the mud of an oven, it does cut her. As Jamuna Tata Chara, go people, son, no Jamuna Tata Chara, go people, son, no harm. Rasa Sikha Kripa Mohaya. Rasa Rasika Kripam Ho 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 Bhakti Vinodas Raham Sila Bhakti Vinodas Raham 
Ayasomati Nandana Brajabaran Hagara Kokula Ranjana Kahan Brajabaran Hagara Kokula Ranjana Ayasomati Nandana Brajabaran Hagara Kokula Ranjana Kahan Hayasom Go cooler, Hey, ha mala hari nam hamia vilasa ha vipi na purandara navina gada baram vam siva dan hasu bahasam hey Prejudan of Fallen, Sudakul and Asana and Hundagur and Raku Hand. Hey, go in the Marhaba, Navanita, Taskara, or in. Sundharananda Gopalasin Hey! Jamuna Tattva Chara Gopi Vasanvara Rasa Sikha Kripa Mohaya Hey! Here are of one lover, Vindavana, Natavana, Pati Vinodas Raha, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Hare. Hey! Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey! Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Hare. Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hammer, 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 ha 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 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Nitai Gaur. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Nitya Gaur. Anitai Gaur Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Gaur Hari Bhav Anitai Gaur Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Hari Bhav Anitai Gaur Hari Bhav Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Shvila Prabhu Pada Hey Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Hila Prabhupada Ki Jai Gaur Pemanande Hari 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 Anybody good with electronics out there? Nobody? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Canto 9, Chapter 4 Verse number 26, and this is Durvasa Cursed. Ambarish Maharaj offended by Durvasa Muni. Mm -hmm. Verse number 26. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Saritam Bhakti Yogena. Tapo yuktena partidavaha. Tapo yuktena partidavaha. 
Svadharmenam harim prinan Sarvan kaman shanayar jaiho Saritam bhakti yogena Tapo yugtena parti vahaha Swadharmena harim prinan Sarvam kaman shanayar jaiho Ladies, Anyone else? Sa. Sa. He. he. Ambarish Maharaj. Maharaj. Itam. Itam. In, this In this way. Bhakti Yogena. By performing transcendental loving service to the Lord. Tapa Yuktena which is simultaneously the best process of austerity. Parti Vaha, the king, Swadharmena, by his constitutional activities, Harim, unto the Supreme Lord, Prinan, satisfying, Sarvan, all varieties of kaman material desires shanai gradually jaho gave up so here we're hearing more about Maharaj Ambarish the king of this planet Maharaj Ambarish thus performed devotional service to the Lord and in this endeavor, practice severe austerity, always satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead by his constitutional activities. He gradually gave up all material desires. Hmm. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Severe austerities in the practice of devotional service are of many varieties. For example, in worshipping the deity in the temple, there are certain laborious activities. Sri Vigrahara Dana Nityanana Sringaratan Mandir Marjanado. One must decorate the deity, cleanse the temple, bring water from the Ganges and Jamuna, continue the routine work, perform RT many times, prepare first class food for the deity, prepare dresses, and so on. In this way, one must constantly be engaged in various activities, and the hard label involved in certain, in certain, is certainly in austerity. Similarly, the hard label involved in preaching, preparing literature, preaching to atheistic men, and distributing literature door to door, is of course an austerity. Tapo yuktena, tapo divyam putraka. Such austerity is necessary. Yener Savam Sudyet. By such austerity and devotional service, one is purified of material existence, 
Kamanshanar Jaho. Indeed, such austerity leads one to the constitutional position of devotional service. In this way, one can give up material desires, and as soon as one is freed from material desires, as soon as one is freed from material desires, as soon as one is freed from material desires, as soon as one is freed from material desires, as soon as one is free from material desires, he is free from the repetition of birth, death, old age, and COVID virus <laughs> disease. <laughs> Omegyan timarandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri guravena maha shri jaitanya manovistam staptitam yena bhutale svayam rupa kedam mayam dadati svapadantikam pandeham shri guru shri utapadakamalam shri gurun vaishnavam sya shri rupam sagrajatam sahaganad raganatam vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam sarvadutam parijanam sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri rana krishna pradam sahagana lagita shri visakam vitam sya hey krishna karuna sinu dina bandhu jagapate gopisha gopika kanta varakanda namos today Taptakan chena gauran girad he vrindavane swari vrikavanu suti devi pranamami hari priye she is very dear to hari hari priye vansha kalpa tarubis cha kripa sindhu pe vacha patitanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha jai si krishna jaitanya prabhu nit Dhyananda Sri Abdwaita Gadad Har Shiva Siri Gaur Bhakti Vrind Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So austerity leads one to bhakti and there are many kinds of austerities actually Yes, we cultivate knowledge and then knowledge helps us to understand the activities of devotional service, which are the austerities that we perform. And once we get situated in devotional service and the austerities that are connected with these activities, then we can, we can free ourselves from material desires. And when we are freed from your material desires, we are happy. And we are nicely engaged in devotional service. So Prabhupada wants to make a point that the simple activities that we perform, such as you know, worshipping the deities, dressing the deities, preparing food for the deities, cleansing the temple, um, all of the activities, then he goes into the area of preaching, especially preaching to people who are atheist. It's an austerity. There's some difficulty. Because really, Krishna consciousness, there's no difficulty. But in order to somehow or other carry on some service, one must accept some hardship. And that hardship is purifying because it's in relation to Krishna. Where in the material world, people work hard. They work much harder than devotees many times. You can see that. Going to work early in the morning, eating very little, and somehow, sometimes going to meet, I was just talking to one of my disciples. I was trying to get him on the phone all day. And I said, well, where were you? So we were in meetings and it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. He said, yeah, we started at 8.30 in the morning. And I was just sitting around discussing how to make more money. <laughs> that's, is that, an, if that's not an austerity, then nothing is. <laughs> So they're working hard to make more money, making working hard to put up, push on the corporation's import, uh, you know, products. Uh, so this is, you know, the the non devotees work really hard. And they perform a lot of austerities. Politicians, when they want to get elected, uh, they have to. They do so many austerities. They go around meeting so many people. They sleep less, they go to so many conferences, they have to kiss at the babies, you know. <laughs> and they do all kinds of things just to, you know, so they can get elected. 
And so they're willing to do all of that because the, the goal is their sense gratification. So devotees know that what is our goal for our austerities is to become purified from material desires and to, to fit, situate ourselves at the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service. So as it says in the scriptures, austerity is the wealth of the Brahmin class. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's a great opportunity and something that devotees look forward to perform austerities. There's one devotee in the movement, I know him really well. He wants to do the most difficult things. He looks for different things to do that are difficult. <laughs> and he uses them as devotional service. You know, he'll travel around the world looking for gold mines in dangerous places in the Amazon and risking his life. <laughs> just to find gold so he can, or rubies or various other kinds of precious metals so he can use it to support the Hare Krishna movement. So yeah, there are devotees like that. He, he always, he doesn't like anything easy. <laughs> easy is like, it's like an insult, you know. <laughs> so yeah, so w when we get accustomed to accepting austerities, we look forward to it. At first, it seems to be a little bit difficult, but once you accept it and you run with it, in other words, you go with it, you find it's enjoyable. The challenges, the hardships, the the uh, apparent difficulties that we face are actually nectar. <laughs> really, the nectar. Uh, just like Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and he illustrates this point in his, in his he says, what is my happiness, my dear Lord? What is my happiness? My happiness is the, uh, the difficulties that I face in executing your devotional service. These are my happiness. That's what he says. Because he says, now I can offer you something. I have something to give you. And when things are easy, what, you know, we can do something. All right, so it's nice. And it's still devotional service. But we have to sometimes go out on book distribution and we have to face the karmis who are colder than the weather, you know. <laughs> so it becomes difficult sometimes. And when sometimes things are not going right and nobody wants to take a book or the weather is so cold that it becomes difficult to stay out. Or there's so many other ways to look at it as far as hardships. In fact, this is what builds Krishna consciousness. This movement was built on austerity. As soon as we give up austerities, we will be just like all of the other religions in the world. We come to church once a week, we look at each other, smile, shake hands, you know, uh, put a few donations in the box, go home and feel good, and have some prasad. <laughs> then our, move, our movement is finished. <laughs> so the austerity is to keep it moving. In other words, look for ways to preach Krishna consciousness. Look for ways to increase your service. And try to make it nicer, try to make it more. This is Krishna conscious. And that, that really inspires the devotee and devotional service. Because it's for Krishna. <laughs> It's for Krishna. I mean, this movement wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the austerities of the devotees in the old days. I mean, the austerities now, then were nothing now. I mean, now it's just like a picnic. <laughs> but in those days, it was really, I mean, we had no cold, we only, we only had cold water, you know, year round in Nuvrindavan. That's all we had. There's no hot water. So bathing, and at first when I joined, we were bathing outside in the winter time. I mean, that's what that's all we had. <laughs> we had a little pond, and we were throwing water over us, and that was our bath. We had one dhoti, and we had to wash it at night and wear it the next day. <laughs> if a towel, they would take a towel and cut it into four pieces and give it to four different devotees. And that's what that was your towel. It was like a big wash rag. <laughs> That's all it was. So these were the personal austerities we had to, you know, 
And then the prashadam was, oh my God, <laughs> dal was no spices, <laughs> rice, no ghee, no salt, <laughs> no subjis. <laughs> I mean, this was it. I mean, this is this is what we accepted, and we liked it. <laughs> we liked it because it was for Krishna, and we enjoyed the austerities. So now we have near Jalakalasi, and we're thinking, "Oh God, let's see." It just started three hours and a half ago, so that's three and a half hours minus twenty-four. That makes brings it down to twenty and a half hours to go. Okay. <laughs> I'm counting the minutes. <laughs> so it shouldn't be like that. That austerity is the wealth of the Brahmin class. Of course, if your health is in jeopardy, then you don't have to perform this austerity. But um, generally, you know, we look forward to austerity. And as Prabhupada says, here he makes the point that um, it... Uh, one one can be free from all material desires and be purified. Nayan deho deho bhaja nir loke kastan kama arti vid bhujanje tapo divyam putra kodyenit sadvam brahma sokam tvanantam yasmud brahma sokam tvanantam This verse is very powerful verse spoken by Rishabdev. He says, you know, you know, why work hard? day and night, simply like hogs and dogs in order for sense gratification. Take up the divine light and perform austerity, putrakadyenat sadvam. And uh, what is that austerity? Uh, devotional service. And what is it? Brahma Sokyam. It's, it's nectar. It's nice. It's sweet. So devotees like austerities. Jai Shri Shri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So if you don't like austerities, you're in the wrong movement. <laughs> well, if you, if you, I mean, if you don't want to do austerities, you're in the wrong, wrong, wrong movement. If you don't like them, but you, at least you do them anyway, it's okay. You can make advancement. So we should accept difficulties as opportunities for making progress in devotional service. Sometimes devotees even create difficulties in order to make life more exciting. <laughs> But that's not necessary. There are recommended austerities. Um, one of the recommended austerities is to chant every day 16 rounds on beads without fail and follow the four regulative principles strictly. Prabhupada said, if you can do that for your whole life, from the time you begin your Krishna conscious, you can go back to Godhead. That's a great austerity. How many people are actually can do that every day, 16 rounds? and four regative principles continuously for years and years, decades, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That's an austerity. But once you get to a certain point, austerity becomes easy. It becomes nectar. When you first look at it or you first think about it, and sometimes you try to analyze it, you think, oh my God, that's too hard. Let me look for something easier. But when you, f when you surrender to it and you go ahead with it, you actually start to enjoy it. And then you think of different ways by which you can make it your, the service even better, like that. Just like book distribution. We have, when we first started, book distribution was you go out in the streets and that was book distribution. But now we have at least 10, 15 different ways we can do book distribution through different medias, through different agencies, in other words, putting books in hotel rooms. They have vending machines where you can put books in vending machines. It's like you get your package of potato chips. You know, you put your you put your uh, coin inside the the machine. You pull the lever, and, and out comes you know beyond birth and death. <laughs> So yeah, you can. So we 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 came up with so many ideas on how to distribute books in so many ways. But it started off very basic, just out in the streets, day to day, and that's still the main way. But so you see, once we start to do something, we also think of different ways on how to improve it. Just like 
worshiping in the deity is one of the most amazing ways to increase your service. You can start to think how many different ways you can dress the deities in such a nice way. How nice you can arrange the altar. How nice you can create backdrops to enhance the whole scene on the altar. How, many, how different ways you can place the items on the altar to make it look nicer and even more attractive. And um, when you worship, also you can practice how to imp improve the mantras when you're chanting, when you're worshiping. How to do the, uh, the arti in such a way that it's nicely done. Just like uh, our pujari is using the charmer fan. <laughs> so Prabhupada, many times he would be there during the hot weather and uh, he would have someone fanning him with a charmer. But if you didn't know how to do it, Prabhupada would say, get somebody else, you know. <laughs> he wouldn't accept it if you wouldn't know how to do it. So one devotee, he was like, he was going. And Prabhupada said, get somebody up here with some intelligence, you know. <laughs> so one devotee, he got up, he told me this personally. He said, I grabbed the charmer, and he was just going, shh, and he was making it really fast and making all kinds of problems. And it was good. <laughs> Prabhupada liked that. So, yeah. So, yeah, we can do it. There's a way to use the charmer. There's a way to use the, the peacock fan. There's ways to offer the artis with the, the different circles, how to do that, how to do it, how to meditate on the way the article is being, just like when you're offering the water, you're actually bathing the deities. So you visualize taking the deities or the Lord down to a holy place. And as you offer the water, you're bathing the, the Lord at the holy place. When you give the cloth, what are you doing? You're actually giving a new set of clothes to the deity after he's bathing. That's what the cloth means. It also indicates drying. It means two things. Yeah. So when you're offering fire, and fire is the purifying agent, it's the most pure. They say fire is the purest of all elements. It purifies everything. And then you have uh, the incense different fragrances, how to offer it nicely. So you can, I'm just using this as an example of one of the many services we do. So when you start thinking how to do the service more and better, Krishna gives you so many ways and so many ideas, and you get resources. This is what makes devotional service exciting. It makes devotional service exciting. Well, because to try to use your creative, not that you have to keep changing how to do things all the time, but you should always be thinking, how can I do it better? Or how can I do it more, um, what we say, according to the instructions given by the spiritual masters, by the acharyas. That, so this is a mental austerity like that. But sometimes we just want to get the service over with so we can go on to the next service. But that doesn't really satisfy the soul. What satisfies the soul is really being absorbed in what you're doing and do it as nice as you can. Just like when we sing, we should sing loud. And not just go, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. Sing loud. You see, when we go to kirtan mailers, I know certain kirtan leaders, they say, you know, sing loud, <laughs> can't hear you. <laughs> because that awakens the bhakti when we sing loud. <laughs> it gets the bhakti moving, gets the energy going, and the enthusiasm, and then the energy fills the whole atmosphere and everybody benefits. So yeah, so there's different, we always think, how can I do this service nicer? 
And if you if you can develop that mentality, you will always be happy in Krishna consciousness. And you'll always be enthusiastic in your service like that. But if we get into this thing how to how to simply get it over with so we can go on to the next service, then that's what it'll be. It'll be just like a different things we do and then the most important part of the day is taking prasadam. <laughs> But when the but there the Goswamis, they forgot to take the prasadam because they were so busy in devotional service, they forgot. It's not like they didn't want to take prasadam; they just forgot. The service was so nectar that they simply wanted to keep serving. And they just forgot about taking prasadam. So yeah, so this is devotional services like this. So it appears to be an austerity, but actually it's nectar. It's really nectar like that. We have to go out and preach. People are not so receptive. We have to create some kind of mood to make them more receptive. We say certain things. We do certain things to somehow or other, um, you know, make it more. Uh, easier for them to understand. So we're always thinking how to increase the quality of your service like that. How to do more, how to do better like that. And that's nectar, that's nice. But don't get to the point where you have so much service you can't do everything nicely. That's not. That's another one. Maybe service should be done on what is called increments. You gradually increase, gradually increase, gradually increase. And then it becomes nice. And then what happens? Material desires are gone. Oh, yeah, I had that material desire. Where did it go? It's gone. <laughs> I used to, I wanted to do this. Now I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> it's just, the, and that's how Krishna consciousness works. It pushes out all of those desires for individual uh, satisfaction and it keeps us focused on Krishna and devotional service and pretty soon you're back to Godhead <laughs> you made it <laughs> one day uh, it says that for a devotee of the Lord when they die uh, a pure devotee of the Lord when they die their return to devotion to the spiritual world is simultaneous in other words, one minute you're in the body, the next minute you're in the spiritual world. It's that fast. That fast. In fact, it's not even a minute. It's a, it's simultaneously. As soon as you you're leaving and you're you're there at the same time. It's instantaneous for a pure devotee. And if you're a little less pure, it takes a little bit longer. But according to the level of your purity, that's why for the sinful people who are not even near purity, they have to go to Yamaraj, get punished, and then they get another body before they actually can begin the next life. And that takes so many, sometimes it takes months for them to get a new body. But for devotee, it's instantaneously, back home, back to Godhead. So yeah, so these austerities are, uh, as Prabhupada uses the word severe, but in the beginning they seem like that. Mm -hmm. And after some time they become nectar. <laughs> and what they say in the material world, what's nectar in the beginning becomes poison in the end. And what's poison in the beginning in devotional service becomes nectar in the end. So yeah. So what may be undesirable, or what we say hard, in the beginning becomes nice after a while. And in the material life, something looks nice and you go for it, it's nice at the beginning and after some time it changes and it becomes something you want to get rid of. <clears throat> That's the difference, complete opposite. Okay, any questions, comments, austerity?
Purva. Hare Krishna Haraj, thank you. So about this, on one side, um, getting through attachments and on the other detachments to material, and on the other side, getting new attachment for spiritual. So this is going simultaneously. You cannot just drop material attachments, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's artificial. There's people who try to do that, give up material life, but don't take up spiritual life. And they become, what we say, lazy or useless. And, and then they go back, just like the, the impersonalists, what are the impersonalists? They go to the, the, the uh, they rise high up, and sometimes they reach the Brahma Jodi, but because there's no activity in the, in the Brahma Jodi, there's just peace, and they just they fall down again back to the material world and they take up you know material activities again because activity is the nature of the soul it's also in the nature of the mind and body to be active laziness is a disease it's actually a disease it's thank you yeah We got someone from the cyberspace. Avaduta Rai Das. We emphasize chanting Japa in the association of devotees. But Bhaktivinoda in Harnama Chintamani writes that the devotee should spend some time chanting in a solitary place. What do you think about this? Oh, Bhakti Siddhanta talks against that. To chanting in a solitary place. Yeah, what is that? What is that song? Kaitava. He says one is trying for cheap reputation, but they're thinking about women and money. That's all. Winners. <laughs> so, uh, solitary place. What, what does that mean? Generally, when we go to holy places, there's always devotees there. When we come to the temple. Sometimes we chant in our apartment or in our home, and we're by ourselves. But you should know, be careful, because the mind can will easy wander. So it's a little more difficult. But one who's practiced in devotion, in chanting, can also chant in that in that in that atmosphere and be fixed in their chanting, but it's not. We always look forward to the association of devotees. It's not something we, you know, run away from. But sometimes, you know, it becomes if the atmosphere is not right in the temple, it, uh, sometimes it becomes difficult. For example, if people are walking around during the japa period then it may disturbs the japa. So most temples, what they do, not most, some temples, they have an area for walking, area for sitting. You don't mix the sitting and the, the walking in the same area. Because the persons who walk, they're walking right near the people who are sitting, and that's disturbing. <laughs> so if you can divide, the room up into two areas, one for sitting and one for walking. And then those who are sitting, they can focus. Those who are walking, they can all associate like that. But if the temple doesn't facilitate it because of the size, then it becomes difficult. So that's why sometimes devotees want to, don't want to chant in the temple because it becomes too disturbing if there's other things going on. If people are running around doing service in the middle of the japa period, that's another thing. Japa should be just an atmosphere of focus. It should be completely quiet like that. Just like it took, what's well, about a hundred years to fix the floor here, but we got it fixed. Our uh, musical floor. <coughs> <laughs> 
brings back memories, huh? <laughs> so we had that floor, <laughs> and that was miserable. <laughs> After a while, I mean, you, you just have to kind of like focus really hard on your chanting, and that somehow maybe you can just, that stays in the background, you don't hear it anymore. <laughs> It's an impetus for getting attentive and becoming more attentive. <laughs> but it's difficult for new people who are like that. So, yeah, japa should be done in an, in an environment where there is no disturbances. Because it's japa meditation. <laughs> like that. Like that. <clears throat> so we try to create that. And there is another question. I read sometimes the Lord, to test the enthusiasm of the devotee, gives him a bird in the heavenly planet. What do you think about this? This sounds dangerous. Uh, I'm not sure. Could you repeat that again? So I read, I read sometimes the Lord, to test the enthusiasm of the devotee, gives him a bird in the heavenly planet. What is the in, the test of enthusiasm? What does that mean? I don't know. Just to see how enthusiastic he is about the heavenly planets? No, like enthusiasm in general. So like bringing him to the heavenly planets, obviously. This is a test in this. Well, for a devotee, that's hell. <laughs> for Bodhananda Saraswati says that, he says, you know, elevation to the heavenly planets is like Akash Pushpayate. <laughs> it's like flowers in the sky. In other words, it's just a dream. Devotees don't aspire for that at all. They want to go back to the spiritual world. Heavenly planet means more sense enjoyment, that's all. Better sense enjoyment, but it's still sense enjoyment. That's why it says that many souls who are in the heavenly planet, when they become aware of Lord Chaitanya's movement on this planet, they actually aspire to take birth in this movement. And Prabhupada made that point and said it a few times that Many of the children who have, or take birth in our movement are actually coming from the higher realms. They're actually coming into families here. And you see, you see the children in our movement are very sharp when they're, if they're born in devotee families. They learn fast, they're intelligent, like that. Thank you. Yeah. So, generally, that would be a punishment. <laughs> for a serious devotee. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Um, I'm curious to see how you can make the difference between austerity, which uh, uh, takes you to advancement in spiritual progress, and uh, stupidness. Like to, to just suffer, you know, just purely suffer for nothing. Just, you know, we sometimes do these austerities, but we don't do them with intelligence. We don't do them with, you know, I want to do that, 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 but it just brings us more down and more, you know. <clears throat> well, yeah, that, we should avoid that, obviously. But know that, learn about the service you're going to do and do it in the best way you can. If you're always thinking how to improve the service you're doing, you'll get so many ideas and you'll start becoming good at it. Even the smallest things, you know, 
you can think of how how you can do it maybe quicker and more efficient with better with better attention all these things are part of improving the quality of our service so we should you know, we can avoid these uh, stupid mistakes if we think how to do the service nicely even before we do it like if we give a class sometimes we prepare for the class if we're going to worship the deities we prepare everything we prepare our mind we get everything ready we pray to krishna to give us some intelligence how to worship him nicely all these things can be there Stu uh, fear doing things stupid and feeling bad about it it does happen sometimes the most important thing is be attentive to whatever you're doing that's the that's the thing keep your attention focused and that's an austerity you know. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So how many of you are doing the near gel today? Well, practically everybody, huh? Ananta, yeah? Okay. Good. Good luck. <laughs> it's easy if the trick is to stay busy if you if you start spacing out and then you start thinking about the things you shouldn't be thinking about stay in stay busy in devotional service Today's a good day for increased japa. Try to do 64 rounds today. It's not hard. <laughs> Don't sleep. <laughs> and Prabhupada never liked that. Fasting and then because I'm weak because of fasting, I go to sleep. Prabhupada said, feed him and put him to work, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Pray for me also. Sila Prabhupada, ki jai. Jai. <laughs>